And now, stay tuned for the program that is rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. Prentice in the bar, you try to avoid him. 
Care for a drink, Mr. Gordon? Uh, no, no, thank you, Doctor. I seldom drink. But uh, surely a glass of Kirsch. Well, all right, Doc, if you insist. Waiter, two glasses of Kirsch, please. I uh, might as well come straight to the point, Mr. Gordon. What's this about your planning to marry Clorinda Rogers? Oh, we're very much in love. No doubt you think so. I've known Clorinda all her life. She's been engaged to half a dozen men. Naturally. She's very lovely. And very rich. You're very unkind. Clorinda is impressionable, fickle. She was in love with a music teacher when she was only a child. Her father sent him away. Then it was her tennis instructor, a golf pro, and a lifeguard. I don't see how this concerns Miss Rogers and me. She did not marry any of these men, Gordon. And she won't marry you. I think she will. No, she won't. Not if I can find a way to prevent it. And I certainly intend to. The doctor's manner is infuriating, isn't it, Carl? And you wonder what he's going to do. He has a great influence on Clorinda. There's no doubt about that. And he'll probably try to prevent your being alone with her. The three of you are at dinner when Mr. Wood, the manager of the lodge, comes to your table. You have nothing to worry about, Dr. Prentice. I've arranged for you to keep your room throughout the carnival. Well, that's very nice of you. I realize how crowded you are. Oh, now, don't mention it. No trouble is too great for a friend of Miss Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Mm. You're very kind. Is everything satisfactory? Very. I must compliment you on the excellent service in spite of the crowd. Thank you. Fortunately, the extra waitresses arrived this afternoon. Yeah, they look quite colorful. Yeah. We always dress them in Bavarian costumes for the sports carnival. They're starting in a bit early this year. Now, if there's anything you want, anything at all. Those Bavarian costumes are very effective, aren't they, Mr. Gordon? Why, yes, Doctor, they are, in a way. Oh, look, Carl, that girl over there, the one with the long blonde braids. Oh? She looks like a real Bavarian, doesn't she? Uh, yes. Yes, I suppose she does. Well, what's the matter, Carl? You aren't yourself tonight. Oh, really? Well, I'm sorry. Perhaps I'm a bit tired. Tired? With a physique like yours? Nonsense. Tell you the truth, Gordon. You act as if you'd just seen a ghost. And you have seen a ghost, haven't you, Carl? The new waitress. The one with the long, blonde braids. The resemblance is remarkable. A little older and thinner, perhaps. But so much the same. And you must know at once. Quickly, you excuse yourself and leave the dining room. You take a short walk to steady your nerves. Later, you go to the back door of the kitchen where the waitresses will come out, restlessly pace up and down, remaining in the shadows. Finally, the girls come out in pairs, laughing and talking together as they go down the path to the servants' quarters. At last, she comes out, alone, the one with the blonde braids. You make sure that you aren't observed, and then you start down the path after her and call softly. Rita. Rita. Who is it? Did somebody call me? Yes, Rita. I called you. Oh, no. It isn't. It couldn't be. Rita, be quiet. But, Carl, it's you. It's you, my husband. Oh, Carl, I've found you at last. <laughs> Here in Hollywood, where The Whistler is produced, this was the week the movie folks awarded their coveted Oscars. <laughs> Too bad there isn't an Oscar for gasoline. Because I'm sure Signal Gasoline would have run away with the honors for outstanding performance. Just as some actors become typed in certain roles, you may have typed Signal Gasoline for economy because of its fame as the go-farther gasoline. But economy, mind you, is only the beginning of Signal's story. The important thing is what makes Signal's good mileage possible. The fact that Signal gas helps your engine run so efficiently. For when your engine runs efficiently, you can depend on it to deliver an outstanding performance in any role. Quick starting, peppy pickup, smooth power. So if you want your car always to perform as if it had just won an Oscar, 
Keep in mind that performance and mileage are like birds of a feather. They go together. To get both, get Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. seemed assured. Your marriage to wealthy Clorinda Rogers about to become a reality. Your wife, Frida, the wife you thought was dead, has turned up from the past. But you're not going to let anything interfere and spoil things, are you, Carl? No. Somehow you must find a way out. Only you'll need time, won't you, to think things over and work out a plan. You stand almost petrified, staring at Frida as she continues to talk. And then... But Carl, you are so quiet. Why do you not say something? Well, it's... It's such a shock to me, Frida. But a happy one, Carl. Oh, yes, of course, but I... I, I, I thought you were dead, the bombing of Munich. Our home was bombed. I lost everything. But I was saved. I was with the displaced persons. So long. You tried to find me, Carl? Oh, of course, of course. I tried hard to find you. I wrote everywhere. But no one knew of Carl Gruber. Well, I, uh... I, I changed my name to Carl Gordon. But why? Oh, it's easier to pronounce, you know, more American. After all, Frida, I am an American. Yes. So now I am Mrs. Carl Gordon. Mrs. Carl Gordon. Oh, Frida, not so loud. But why not? Well, I'm the skiing master here. They want only single men for skiing masters in America. Oh? But why? Well, it's, it's the custom... If anyone finds out we're married, I'll be fired. Now, you wouldn't want that, would you? Oh, no, Carl, of course not. You must act as though you've never seen me before. Can you do that? I will try. Good. And we can both keep our jobs and work hard and save our money. So that we can be together, always. Yes, Rita, always. You will come to my cabin, Carl? There it is, the one way in the back. Yes, Frida, but not tonight. I, I, I'm i busy. But when, Carl? Tomorrow night, after dinner. Say, uh, about ten. I will be waiting. Good night, Carl. Well, Carl, one thing is clear. Frida hasn't changed. She'll never let you go, will she? But you have until tomorrow night to think things out. And you feel certain that she won't talk. But you know you'll have to be careful. Very careful. Make certain Frida doesn't see you with Clorinda Rogers. You know Frida's jealousy, the bitter quarrels in the past over your attentions to other women. So the next morning, you carefully avoid Clorinda. But later, she finds you on the terrace. Oh, Carl, darling. Well, where have you been all morning? Giving lessons. I've missed you. Well, now you have the company of your friend, Dr. Prentice. Well, I'm not so sure that he is my friend, Carl. What makes you think that, dear? Now, Carl, you won't get angry. You won't think that I'm a child tied to apron strings. Uh, what is it, Clorinda? You can tell me. Well, uh, you're going to meet someone. My friend, as you call him, Dr. Prentice. He arranged this. Arranged what? For my father to come here for the sports carnival, Dr. Prentice says. And father hates winter sports. Dr. Prentice just sent for him to try to break up our marriage. No one can do that. Uh, where is he, Clorinda? Your father. Oh, you're not angry, then? Not at all. Oh, darling, it's going to be all right. At the first possible opportunity, we'll drive into the village and we'll get our marriage license. Right. Now, Clorinda, shouldn't you introduce your fiancé to your father? Yes, of course, Carl. Father and Dr. Prentice, well, they're in the cocktail lounge. Come along, darling. <laughs> I must say, you've been keeping something from me. Had I known such places as this existed. It is fun, isn't it, Father? And I'm so pleased that you approve of Carl. Huh? Um, uh, yes. Uh, you seem quite captivated by the atmosphere of Sylvana Lodge, sir. Yes, he even surprises me on that score. I dare say, Doctor. Uh, yes, uh, beautiful view out this window, don't you think, Florinda? Very much like, uh, the barrier. Yes, Father. The barrier. 
I understand you've been there, Carl. Yes, I have. You watch me from the top. No, I will go down, Carl. Here I go. Frida. Frida, you're hurt. I don't know. Oh, how stupid of me to fall. What happened? Carl, I will never be able to ski anymore. You can walk. Yes. Yes, I think so. You will help me up, Carl? Yes, yes. I'll help you. Uh, now, look, Frida, if, if you can make it all right, we'd better go back separately. There's a shortcut just around that turn. You go that way, huh? I understand. We don't want you to be fired. You are all right now. Oh, yes, Carl. I'm all, all right, right now. That's fine. This is my day off. I can rest. I will stay in my cabin all day. That's a good idea, Frida. Yes, stay in your cabin all day. <laughs> Mr. Wood. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Carl. Uh, Miss Rogers wants me to go to the village with her this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Anything to please, Miss Rogers? We'll be gone a few hours. But it's starting to snow. There may be a storm. I know. We're going to use the sleigh. Oh, well, fine, fine. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, would you mind not mentioning to anyone where we've gone? <laughs> of course not, if Miss Rogers doesn't want it known. No, she doesn't. Oh, and, and before I forget it, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm afraid I did a very stupid thing. Yes? Well, I got a ski outfit and skis for that, that new German waitress. Who, uh, oh, uh, Frida Gruber? Yeah, I, I shouldn't have done it. She's good. She's very good, but... Well, she's just out of shape. No, no, I suppose not. Well, she just better take it easy. And she's very reckless, too. Uh, she doesn't know the country. I, I saw her this morning uh, near Thunder Cliff. What? Thunder Cliff? She mustn't go near there. there. There are signs all over the place. Yeah, there are signs, but she may not understand them. You know, we phrase things so differently in America. Yes, well, you just talk to her, Gordon. Explain exactly what they mean so there'll be no mistake. And tell her that you must not go skiing alone. All right, I will, Mr. Wood. I'll make it very clear to her. Yes, do that. The thunder, cliff, oh, my car, Mr. Dempsey. Suicide and an accident right now positively ruin the sports carnival. <laughs> Well, Carl, you've made one more step in your plan, haven't you? A reasonable explanation for the accident at Thunder Cliff. And the storm has played into your hands, too. The snow will cover your tracks. Late that night, after you and Clorinda returned from the village, where you went for a marriage license, you slip into Frida's cabin. She's sleeping a deep, heavy sleep. You put a pillow over her face. It's all over quickly. And you look through the cabin for anything else which might connect you with her. The rest of your plan is more difficult. But you finally accomplish it. And two hours later, Frida's body, dressed in a ski suit, is at the bottom of Thunder Cliff. In the morning, when you go into the lobby, there's an air of tension as if something had happened. The sheriff and a couple of members of the ski patrol are at the desk with Mr. Wood. Uh, Carl... Will you come here a moment, please? Oh, certainly, Mr. Wood. Carl, that, that German waitress, did you talk to her about skiing alone? Oh, yes, I did, Mr. Wood. I made it very plain. Well, she, uh, she didn't take your advice, and it's cost her her life. No. What's happened, Sheriff? The girl went over the edge of Thunder Cliff. Her body was found at the bottom. It was obviously an accident. And I guess we'd better fill out the accident report. <laughs> Every person who owns a car should know about what has been called the greatest improvement in automobile batteries in 20 years. An improvement which is now yours to enjoy in Signal Deluxe batteries. I'm referring to Microporous All Rubber Separators, which not only permit freer flow of acid between the plates, but are themselves impervious to the action of the acid. As a result, new Signal Deluxe batteries deliver up to 35% more power ready to run your car radio and all the other electrical gadgets on today's cars. In addition, new Signal Deluxe batteries last so long, they're guaranteed not just for the usual 12 or 18 months, but for a full 30 months on a service basis. That makes the cost per month so low, you're actually saving money. 
while enjoying the extra power and dependability of a Signal Deluxe battery. So before you buy any battery, get your Signal Dealer's trade-in offer for your old battery. Find out his convenient credit terms. Prove for yourself that today's best battery buy is today's finest battery. The new improved Signal Deluxe battery at Signal Service Station. <laughs> went very simply and smoothly, didn't it, Carl? The body of your wife, Frida, was found at the bottom of Thunder Cliff. The sheriff considers it an accident. And now nothing stands in the way of your marriage to wealthy Clorinda Rogers. You're helping the sheriff to fill out the accident report when Dr. Prentice comes up. Uh, this is Dr. Prentice, Sheriff. Good. We need your help, Doctor. There's been an accident. An accident? I'll get my bag and be with you right away. I know it's too late for that. The accident was fatal. That new uh, German waitress was skiing and went over a cliff. Surely you, you don't mean Frida Gruber? Yes, yes, Doctor. It, 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 it's just terrible. That it, it's impossible. The girl couldn't have gone skiing. Well, she did. And she was very reckless. Well, Carl here warned her. That's right, Doctor. Oh. That girl had a displaced kneecap, an old injury. She heard it again skiing yesterday morning. She called me last night, said she didn't want the lodge position to know anything about it. Asked me not to mention it. Hmm. Doesn't seem likely she'd go skiing with a bad knee. Not only that, she was in great pain. I gave her a strong sedative. She couldn't have wakened naturally before noon. Then someone awakened her, took her out to the cliff, pushed her over. I see no other explanation, Jerry. But who'd want to do that? Did she have any enemies here, Miss Wood? Oh, no, no. She was a displaced person. She just arrived. She knew no one here and talked very little. Who did she talk to? Uh, you, Gordon? Well, we only talked on the subject of skiing, Sheriff. I warned her at Mr. Wood's request. And did uh, she say anything to you, Dr. Prentice, about anyone wanting to kill her? Of course not. And she didn't seem to be the sort of girl who would make enemies. She was naive, sweet, so happy about being in America. Well, sure beats me. She seemed very anxious to learn American customs. Oh, that reminds me. She made a rather amusing request. Hmm? What was it? Well, she gave me a letter that arrived for her yesterday. She insisted I have Mr. Wood put it in the hotel safe. She had the quaint idea that everything was kept in a safe in America. Well, what's this? May you throw some light on the matter. It is. Right here. It's apparently forwarded to her from some refugee association. I doubt if it would be any help. Well, I'll take a look. Dear madam... Please to inform you that we have finally located your missing husband. He is working as skiing instructor at Sylvana Lodge, Colorado, under the name of Carl Gordon. will be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at the same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving. If you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances, you may even save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Gerald Moore, Isabel Jewell, Gladys Holland, Ed Begley, John Daner, and Herb Butterfield. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by George Adrian and Carol Nix, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.